Hello and welcome to another edition of Zog Science. Today we're going to be looking at sex-linked traits and how they are inherited. So uh, first, kind of before we get into sex-linked traits, we need to talk about chromosomes. So remember, chromosomes are only visible during mitosis or meiosis um, because that's when they condense. Usually they are just hanging out in the cell as chromatin. Um, and to analyze chromosomes, biologists, we take pictures during um, mitosis or meiosis and align them into their homologous pairs. And this picture is known as a karyotype. So what we can see here is that we've got all of our pairs of chromosomes lined up one another. And kind of the, one of the ways that they can tell between the different types, uh, different pairs of chromosomes is you see these nice little black bands. Those are not genes. Those are just different areas of the chromosomes that have different um, amounts of A's, T's, C's, and G's. The darker regions um, have more C's and G's. Um, but each chromosome kind of has the same areas, um, e or each pair of chromosomes has those same areas. So in a human karyotype, chromosomes uh, 1 through 22 are known as autosomes, and they tr code for traits that are not related to sex at, um, at all. Uh, and both males and females have the same types of autosomes. Uh, pair, chromosome pair number 23 includes the sex chromosomes, which are the X and the Y, and those uh, determine the biological sex traits of an individual. And males have XY and females have XX. Now this is not uh, necessarily true for all animals. This is just for humans um, and other mammals. Um, reptiles and birds, they actually have, um, do not have XY. They do not have sex chromosomes. Um, they just have XX. So the sex is determined by the father of a child. Why is that? Well, the father can either give the X or the Y, but the mother can only give the X, right? So if we were to set up a Punnett square, right, the gametes from the father will evil, either have an X or a Y, and the gametes from the mother will either have an X or an X. So we have a 50% chance of either getting a boy or a girl. Now, this is not necessarily exactly true. Um, some families have higher probabilities one way or the other, just kind of based on some genetic traits um, that can occur. Uh, this is also true of twins. So some, some families have higher uh, chances of having twins than others. So let's take a look at some sex link traits. Um, they are not necessarily related to your biological sex, but they are can have some traits that are um, uh, like diseases or whatnot. Uh, so only the X chromosome carries alleles for sex-linked traits. Um, these alleles are written as superscripts. Uh, the Y chromosome does not carry uh, any alleles for sex-linked traits. It only carries um, traits that specifically relate to males being male. So this is the uh, X chromosome. You can see that it's 164 million bases and has lots and lots of genes. Each one of these lines is a gene. Um, one of the fairly famous ones that it has is hemophilia, which the royal families in Europe had a rash of due to the large amount of inbreeding. And then here is the Y chromosome. It only has the three genes on it, um, basically that determine whether or not you are a male. Uh, <clears throat> now, one of the reasons people believe that we have this Y chromosome uh, is that part of it actually broke off and joined onto the X chromosome, which is part of the reason why the X is so much larger than the Y. So we had, there was this famous guy named Thomas Morgan who was the one who first determined these sex-linked characteristics, or rather that there were sex-linked traits. Um, and he did his work in the early 1900s, late 1800s. He was an embryologist by trade and was looking at the factors that influenced human inheritance. And he conducted experiments looking at eye color in Drosophila, which are fruit flies. And you can see that there are lots of different, um, basically, types of um, how the eyes can form. Um, specifically, he was looking at eye colors. And there are three different colors, um, red, sepia, and white. Red is the, re is the wild type. And wild type just means that that's what you, it's the dominant normal trait. Um, what you find in most of them. It doesn't necessarily always have to be dominant, but it's what you find in most of the organisms. Then there is a sex-linked white trait and a recessive autosomal trait um, called sepia. Uh, and red is dominant to both sepia, and sepia is dominant to white. Uh, so consider flying crosses that Morgan conducted. 
All right, so what he did was that he crossed a red-eyed male with a heterozygous red-eyed female. All right, so this would be uh, what you would get for that um, if you did out the Punnett square. You notice that the females are getting two copies of the R, right, whereas the males are only getting one copy, which means that the females are protected from, or are, are going to, in this case, not necessarily protected, but are going to have the red eyes as opposed to white, even though they are a carrier. However, the male, or sorry, even though they're heterozygous, however, the male, since it only gets one, if it gets the recessive trait, then it is absolutely going to have that um, trait. Then he took white-eyed males and crossed them with homozygous red-eyed females. And what happened was that we see that the females both become heterozygous. Another word for that is carrier because they have the trait, but they're not expressing it. Um, carrier really only refers to sex link traits. It doesn't refer to normal autosomal traits. But notice that none of the males can um, get the, can have the, the trait, the white eyes, because the father is always passing on a Y to the male offspring. Um, what sex are white-eyed offspring in the first cross? So all of the white ones are going to be male. Um, uh, could a male be a carrier? No, they can't be a carrier because they uh, only have the one allele. And is it possible for a female fly to have white eyes? Yes, but both of her parents would have to be white-eyed, right? So you would have to um, have um, the father be white-eyed as well as either the mother needs to be white-eyed or the mother needs to be a carrier, one of the two. So these are some of the conclusions. Um, the inheritance of certain traits is linked to biological sex, which makes sense based on what we just kind of looked at. Um, he noticed the large majority of the white-eyed flies were male. So sex-linked traits affect males much more than they affect females. Um, that is because they only have the one X chromosome. If you inherit the recessive allele that is on the X chromosome, you have the, you're going to get that trait because you will not have, there's no dominant allele present. Um, a carrier has a recessive allele in its genotype, but it's not expressed. Males cannot be carriers, only females can be carriers. So sex link traits in humans. Um, so Morgan's conclusion explained the high incidence of certain traits or diseases within predominantly male populations. A uh, big example of that is color blindness. So, uh, are any of you all colorblind? If you look at this, um, this chart, there should be some numbers uh, in each of these circles. I see 25 here, 29, 45, 56, 6, and then 8. Um, if you're having a hard time seeing those numbers, then it's very possible that you are colorblind. Um, and again, that is an X-linked recessive trait. The allele for that is, or the gene for that is on the X chromosome. So we want to do a cross that. Okay, we've got Harry and Sally are two normal vision normal vision adults who have a colorblind son. Um, they've got the big B, little B. So we've got X big B, Y, X big B, and then X little B. Right? That's the only way that we could get the uh, a colorblind offspring. Right? And it's going to be a male. So those are the different possibilities that we could have. We could get a carrier female. Um, that would be just like her mother in terms of being able to pass on the trait to a son. Sally's dad has normal vision. Is Sally's mom colorblind? No, but she is a carrier, right? So if the dad has normal vision, that means that Sally, right, who's this one over here, is automatically going to be getting her big B from father, which means that her mother must have been a carrier, all right? Some other sex-linked traits, um, baldness, their male pattern baldness. Um, not all types of baldness are sex-linked, but most of them are. Uh, muscular dystrophy, hemophilia uh, is, again, one of those major ones because it was prominent, so prominent in the royal families. It's kind of a classic example. Um, and all these traits happen to be sex-linked. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.